What is up, my friends? What is up, my friends? Welcome to a video, a live video. I'm Rob Stewart, and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. I'm so happy to be sharing this time with you to guy with you today, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm choking on water. So before I get into things today, the goal of this live broadcast is to be able to talk to you guys one on one and give you the best advice that I can over you know these types of formats. So many times in the comment section, the nuance that it takes to answer a simple question is a lot more than you guys realize. And I do a lot better job talking than I do writing. So I thought this would be a great way for us to connect. Um, so whenever you guys are ready and I start getting some questions, I will start answering them. And um, some technical things before we get started. Um, I am not a technical guy. This might not go that smooth. I'm going to try to go for about an hour, hour and a half. We'll see how it goes. If this thing falls apart, um, technically, I apologize. It's my first one. I plan on doing some more. As I'm rolling with this, if you guys like this format, leave some comments down below. Ask any questions in the comment section as well. Super chats are available. Yo, a mine. What's up, dude? Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to go over a few things as I uh, start to get people rolling in here. One of the things that I think is the most important um, is my offerings. For those of you who have reached out in the past uh, or are looking for a structure system to heal your skin, visit my website. Um, I do private coaching. I've been coaching for eight years. Um, I also have written a couple books and they're very helpful. So holistichealthactivation.com is my website. And what's up, T, T, Y, Ty? What's up, Allison? What's up, everybody? How many times should you eat a day? I'm just going to get into the questions as they come up and ramble in between. Hope that's okay with you guys. How many times you should eat per day is completely custom to you as an individual. You have to take into account um, if you have some body fat that you want to lose, you have to take into account if you're someone who naturally struggles to get enough calories per day. And you also have to think about what your daily structure of your life is and where your gut health is. Generally with gut health, it is a good idea to do some sort of intermittent fasting, um, giving your, yourself some break throughout the day or at least early in the night, all the way through the, the night as you sleep into the morning so that you can give your gut and your digestion a rest. But with that said, for most people, two meals a day seems to be awesome. The thing is you want to have enough calories to sustain your healthy body weight and to give you all the nourishment and nutrients that you need to overturn skin cells and regenerate your skin. But you also don't want to overeat. So you you got to pick something that works for you. Some people can get away with one meal a day, which I do sometimes. Um, most of the time for me personally, I do two meals a day. And um, yeah, so that's that's my ramble. You really do got to experiment. The keys are getting enough calories, knowing your macros, not over or under eating. Same question I just answered. Rob, did you have eczema when you were 17? I did. I had eczema mostly on my sternum and on my scalp um, pretty much my whole life. Uh, Allison asks, what about castor oil uh, on the skin? If you go back a couple videos, I do talk about castor packs. Um, that's taking castor oil, put it on a, a cloth, putting it on your skin, on your flare up and then adding some type of heat on top of it. And it's super awesome. It will moisturize the ever living hell out of your skin. Um, and it will cut down on inflammation and detoxify things in a major way. So castor oil can work really good. Do, do, do. So uh, Aegis Tuba asked my perspective on taking antihistamines. I don't think that taking any supplements or any pills, some supplements maybe, but any type of uh, antihistamines or allergy pills, for me personally, I just don't like how I feel. Um, also, anything that affects the gut biome or anything that affects um, your immune system in any way, uh, I think it's better just to use 100% natural stuff. 
What I have found with most of my clients is that as the immune system heals and the skin heals, most allergies go away or they minimize big time. So I don't personally take any, any type of allergy medications. What's up, Daniel Mercado? Good old buddy. Good to see you, man. Let's see. So one thing about your questions, guys, if you're just asking general questions like, what's the best thing to do for eczema? Go watch my videos. That's way too general. The more specific and detailed you are with your questions, the more data and detail I can give you. Um, just to let you guys know, uh, a, main, a main, and I'm going to butcher all your names just to let you know because I'm really bad at names, but looks like um, um, a main Abdane uh, says, where do you get your, um, you guys are going too fast. He was asking about where I get my grass fed beef. I get grass fed beef just at Whole Foods or the local supermarket. I also get it from local farmers. I live in Omaha, Nebraska. There's lots of beef farmers. And I've taken the time over the past few years to figure out all the, basically all the cool farmers who have quality products that I can um, trade for or that they'll give me and, and just purchase from them. Raw cream and grass fed cow is mostly what I do. Rachel Johnson, tips on better digestion for animal fats when animal based and I'm having a hard time with fats. Not sure what you mean by having a hard time with fats. Generally, animal fats, especially saturated fat from animals, are going to seal your gut lining and take away IBS and leaky gut. And animal fats are the easiest to digest and assimilate. So if you're new to animal fats, you just might be going through a fat, ad fat adaptation phase. Um, or you just might need to hone in on the animal fats that work best for you. Duck fat, tallow, suet, butter, ghee, all from grass-fed pasture sources will be your best bet. Uh, Amin Abadide said, what happens if you when you get off aminosuppressants after three years? Well, unfortunately, the root issue will have grown and you will be having to start further back than where you started. Any type of prescription drugs, all they do basically is hide the symptoms and they don't address the root issue at all. And they toxify your filtration system and your lymph system. So not good. Thanks nunchuck for grandma. <laughs> I like you too, buddy. I'll give you a thumbs up. Uh, Bobby asked, do you get eczema from wearing rubber gloves? No, you get eczema from an immune slash genetic combination that's turned on by environmental toxins, toxins from your diet, stress, all sorts of things. So it's an immune disorder, autonomic nervous system, inflammatory response that's out of control. Basically, it's not from rubber gloves, although rubber gloves can irritate you and, you know, cause things to get inflamed and not feel too good. Uh Geometrics, does caffeine cause flare-ups or rosacea or any skin disease? Coffee is a major trigger food. There are most of the caffeinated beverages are major trigger foods for eczema, dermatitis, and psoriasis, but caffeine itself is not a trigger food. I generally drink green tea or matcha green tea every single day, and I did throughout my entire healing time. Most of my clients do too, so it's, it's not an issue. So Cameron Alred asked if sunscreen is healthy or bad for the skin. I do not wear sunscreen and I never will. When I wore sunscreen, I got skin cancer, a small one, one time, a pre-cancer burnt off my neck. Here's the thing about sun exposure. If you go out in the early morning and you just don't go crazy and you get sun in the late afternoon um, directly onto your skin, this is going to be a huge vitamin D and hormonal precursor. It's needed. And what I do is in the middle of the day in the summer, I'll wear a big hat and cover up so I don't get burnt. You want to get sun exposure, but you want to avoid getting burnt. Obviously your skin tone um, has a lot to do with that. The thing is, and, and 
there's more research coming out about this all the time is that most of the time sunscreen allows the UVB rays in um, and those just absolutely destroy they, the UVB, the UVB rays don't stop you from, they keep you white. They don't allow you to get tan, but they also don't allow you to get any vitamin D and they can turn on a lot of free radicals and it's, you, you need the UVA and the UVB working together in their proper form. That's, that's what they're meant for. Juan Martinez, I can't stop eating sugar and processed foods. What to do? Just eat tons and tons of protein and animal fats. Most likely sugar cravings come from not getting enough calories from fat and protein. At the end of the day, the body just wants something delicious. It's pretty normal. Rob, experience, have you heard of Biome 8? Yes, I have. I'm not a huge fan of it, but um, I don't know a ton about it. I like all natural stuff that doesn't have any chemicals or anything like that in it. Daniel Mercado, um, Daniel Mercado, my buddy. Do I still have clients that are high carb? Very few. Um, generally across the board, I'd say like 87% of my clients who are successful are either high fat, high protein, or they're high protein, moderate fat. Generally, carbs at around 100 to 200 at most. My low carb people are way under 100. My moderate carb people can get away with 250, 250 grams of carbs per day. And there's only a few people that I work with who actually thrive on carbs. And unfortunately, they're very limited with their carb intake. It's mostly fruit and potatoes. Um, but I do also have some of my carnivore-ish style clients who are doing fruit and meat diet who can fluctuate their carbs a lot and are having some success. And it's pretty a, a pretty good segue. I have been doing some uh, meat and fruit-based dieting and experimenting, and I'm going to be coming up with some new videos for you guys in about a month. And I think you guys will have a, a lot of interest, especially those who are interested in the carb talk. Exactly, Ashley. The best kind of vitamin D comes from the sun. The only type of vitamin D comes from the sun. So Johnny B uh, asked, there's all these foods that used to work for him, um, but now don't. And he says the only thing that works for him is, is juicing, um, which means that um, I, what I would ask you, Johnny, is how long have you been eating those foods? Did you customize your diet? And remember, the reason juicing sometimes works is because it can throw you into a hyperinsulinemic state and a hypercatabolic state, and it can give you false positives. It can send things into remission, kind of, because your body has other bigger issues to deal with, like not getting enough calories, not having any nutrients, and having to deal with all the isolated plant toxins. So you might want to switch to bone broth, and you might consider just going further into customizing your diet and rounding out your nutrient profile and your macros. That usually solves the problem. And let's see, I'm just looking at these comments here, trying to, they're moving quickly. So so Ryan Doherty said, when, when you actually fixed your gut, didn't you do it with mostly plants? And plants are what mostly healed your gut biome. No, no, um, I healed my skin on a plant-based diet and it actually was a, it wasn't a plant-based diet. It was my diet. It was very customized. It was based on fruit and potatoes, squash, very limited other foods, but the majority of what I ate was fruit and potatoes. And basically I set myself into a hypercatabolic state to just absolutely destroy the possibility of inflammation. Um, my gut during the time when I was plant-based did improve from standard American, but it never really got all the way amazing. Luckily, my biomarker shifted enough that my skin healed. And it wasn't until about four, four and a half years ago, four years ago, when I started eating animal foods, that my gut and my digestion and my um, basically, I think the, the lining of my stomach finally healed from the saturated fat. And, and now my, my gut is definitely fully healed. If I was 
to six years ago when I was plant-based, eat a bunch of cheat foods like I did the other day on that video, um, I would have been wrecked for a month. So yes, I healed my skin on a plant-based diet, but it led to some major, major health issues and it didn't really fully heal my gut. It just improved my gut. Experience. You guys are going way too crazy with your diets. Well, if you want to heal your skin, I don't know. What are you willing to do? I, I was willing to eat donkey ass for the rest of my life to have healthy skin and to get out of the depression and the horror of having to deal with that. Diet is the key to addressing the gut biome. It's the it's the entry point. So hey, call it a crazy diet all you want. But hey, I've been 10 years practically with no skin disease and I enjoy the hell out of my food. So is seborrheic dermatitis curable? Uh, that's from Vermix District. Yes, 100%. Uh, Ashley and asked, what's my opinion on avoiding lectin foods? It's a great idea. Beans are, man, almost across the board, about 85% of my clients have major triggers from beans on every level. Um, digestional issues. Remember, if a food gives you bloating, if it gives you the ergles and the burgles, if it messes with your digestion, and if it gives you foul gas and it gives you crappy poops the next day, you are really not going to be uh, killing anything. So I, I don't eat beans. Most of my clients can't handle lectins. Um, generally, I think they're a good thing to avoid. Hey, if you can, if you've tested them and they work for you, then great because beans, they taste pretty good, but most of the time, not, not good. You're welcome, Ryan. Good to talk to you, bud. Uh, experience asked, do I think skin problems are uh, come about because of your mental state? Yeah, in one category. Um, what you think about, how you manage stress, your relationships, your job, um, your how much you work out, how much you have a good support system around you, your, your gut biome, your hormones, your immune system. All of those things are affected by the other thing. So if you're someone who's always stressed, if you're kind of fighting depression, if you're one of those people who stays up late every single night and you eat eating candy and you're just in a bad funk, yeah, that's going to negatively affect your skin health. But if you just get out of that funk and you still don't eat healthy, it's not really going to change a whole lot. Uh, Johnny B asked, so if I were to do it all again, would I do it the same way? Hell no. <laughs> if I, if I know, if I knew 10 years ago, what I know now, I just would have gone straight into the three phase system, um, customized my diet and I would have been healed in probably six months instead of the, the backstory for me guys is it took me a year to heal my skin. But like you guys, I was battling it for 10 years and for 10 years before I healed it, I was in research mode. I was trying different diets. I was experimenting and I'd already kind of ditched the whole Western medical thing. So I suffered big time for a long time until I had an awakening, basically figured out what it was that I needed to do and got very focused and did it. Um, so I would have just started what I'm, where I'm doing now, customize my diet, lots of animal food, some fruit, um, gentle, gentle cleansing and detoxification and just kind of like keep it at that. Sorry if my camera's a little out of focus, guys. Uh, LA Methwitch, do doctors come to me to learn about skin health issues? No, doctors... Um, they don't come to me to learn anything, but I have clients who are doctors. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all doctors do is they're going to prescribe you drugs um, and they are going to make the situation really, really negative every time. They're, they're not going to address the root issue hardly ever. There are some good doctors out there for sure. I've run into a lot. I know a lot. Um, 
But for most of them, they're going to throw the latest drugs at you. They're going to throw the <laughs> – it's just not a good situation. Any way, shape, or form, it's, it's about as bad as possible. So Luke Smith asks, hey, Rob, my face psoriasis moves around slightly and the skin shedding used to be large flaked skin, now smaller flaked dry skin. I've noticed the more fat I lose, the psoriasis recedes, get sugar cravings. Yeah, I mean, if you are in a place where you have a lot of extra body fat or you're a little overweight or you, you're not at a really healthy body fat and body weight for you, that is a, that's going to cause the skin to be as bad as it can be being, you know, having too much body fat is, is really going to destroy all aspects of your health. So yeah, the skin, when you get to a healthy body weight and all of your biomarkers start to shift in the right way, um, including your body weight, body fat strength, then the skin will follow for sure. Daniel Hopkins, could you train MMA with your skin? I don't know if you're asking me if I can train MMA, but I've trained a lot of mixed martial arts in the past 10 years. I've boxed, I've done a little jujitsu. Um, I've done two <laughs> kind of bare knuckle fights um, and I train every single day, um, not necessarily for combat sports anymore, um, but yeah, I train, I train every single day. So yeah, training is excellent. Uh, high carb diets don't necessarily cause dysbiosis. Um, they can. Sugar is a major issue for most people, especially if the sources of your sugar and carbs aren't good. And if you're having too much sugar all the time, your protein's not high enough to buffer it. You're not getting the omegas in, that you need and the cholesterol that you need to actually nourish yourself. Um, your body can go into dysbiosis from sugar alone. But generally, dysbiosis is caused by like your typical standard American diet when you have too much carbs and too much fat in the same diet at the same time. With all healthy diets, you do have to monitor how much sugar and fat are going into your system at the same time. If you have too much of both, even from good sources, it can cause issues for a lot of people. Renzo, why are so many people falling off the vegan diet? I was on the for four years now, completely off the spectrum keto diet. Well, because the vegan diet, uh, I can only speak from experience. It made me sick. So, and for a lot of the clients that I work with who are ex-vegans, they their health was absolutely the worst it's ever been in their life. So, I mean, of course, if you're not getting good results and you're not feeling great and you have a specific diet, it's pretty smart to make a refinement and, and customize it further and try to figure out why you're having issues. Uh, Joe, Jose R, how long does Skinessa take to work and what's the best way to, so, okay, here's the thing. Skinessa alone won't do anything to heal your skin. Skinessa is simply a probiotic that will help the entire process. You have to customize your diet. You have to cleanse and detox. You have to move your body daily. You have to live a healthy lifestyle. The, probiotics on top of all those things are going to speed up the process of healing the gut biome immensely. And that's why they're so effective. But if all you're doing is taking Skinessa and hoping that you're going to see some major changes and major results happen, um, you will be spinning your wheels and you are kind of have some false hopes. Um, it takes a holistic approach, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, okay. Good question. Zeh Zehara Bai. Sorry, I butchered your name. Like I said in the intro, I suck at names. So I'm very sorry. I mean, no disrespect. I'm just crappy at names. Super dyslexic. But uh, Zehara Bai asks why the Three Phases Workbook is not going to be on sale anymore. Um, because I've created an online course that has taken the Three Phase system to an entirely different level. 
everything that I do is progressive and refined, all about refining. And so um, all of the new knowledge that I have has been put into the new course. And there will be aspects of the three-phase system in the new course, but um, I am taking the three-phase book off of the shelf because it's now going to be obsolete. Soul X, there's a big difference between a junk food vegan diet and a whole food vegan diet with a healthy mix of proteins, fats, and carbs. Yes, you're very much right. But I was on a healthy vegan diet. I didn't have one cheat food in almost three years. Um, my plant-based diet was as clean as it gets. Most of my clients who are ex-vegans, they were eating all whole foods. Um, for many people, a plant-based diet, if you, don't, if you can't handle plant toxins, <laughs> then a plant-based diet is going to wreck you uh, no matter how clean it is. Uh, Ryan Lyon asks, how long did it take for me to be okay with dairy? I was fine with dairy the second I started eating it. Um, there was levels to it. High fat dairy like butter um, and ghee and raw cream, right away those foods instantly made me feel absolutely wonderful. Um, and the calories were appreciated. Now, raw milk is another story. It's just a whole different beast. Um, and I don't drink regular milk at all, but I, again, I'm coming out with a video pretty soon next week. Um, I just got done wrapping up 13 days of eggs and dairy only for my entire diet. And I had some crazy things go on and some awesome results had a couple of clients doing the same thing as well. And so there will be more on that uh, subject later. But as far as full fat butter and cream, the second I stopped being vegan and started eating those foods, they, they work for me perfectly good. Uh, Hera asks if the location of the psoriasis means anything. Um, in a way, it doesn't mean anything. Your body is... It, it, your body is fighting itself in an inflammatory way. It's an immune disorder. But the thing about where your psoriasis or dermatitis or eczema is, there are certain areas that do heal faster than others. Generally, the scalp, the face, the broad areas heal a little bit faster than the crooks. Also, what I've noticed, and this has been a surprise, very interesting for me, the last things that healed on my body were the first things that I started getting skin disease. Um, and the, and the last things that got skin disease were the first things to go away. And I'm actually noticing that with a lot of my clients. So, excuse me. So, um, that's kind of an interesting tidbit. All right, son, if you bought the three phases workbook, do you get access to the online course too? No, you do not. The workbook is cheap um, and uh, it's not the same thing. So no, you don't get access to it. You have to just uh, pay for the course and take it and get your gains. John B, do you know within 30 minutes if, food, if a food is bad for you? I do now um, when you are first starting the healing process it's going to take a long time. First, you have to minimize your diet to the non-trigger foods that are traditional. And then you have to test your biomarkers and biofeedback long term. And you develop the ability to read foods. But at first, it doesn't, it doesn't take uh, three hours or 30 minutes, whatever he said. Um, Jose R says, I eat pretty healthy. You can't just eat kind of healthy. You have to literally customize your entire diet and you really can't eat trigger foods in any way, shape, or form for about the first year. If you do fall off the bandwagon and have a cheat, mess up, which most people do, you got to go through a little cleansing protocol that I created and get back on the bandwagon as fast as possible. So to answer your question, Jose, um, chicken's fine, fish is fine, um, but you have to customize all aspects of your diet for it to heal the gut biome long term. Bilal Mohammed, does lifting help if you have psoriasis, yes. Lifting weights is an amazing thing for the lymphatic system, 
Uh, let's see. Ryan Doherty asked, how did I come to decide on potatoes and fruit mostly when you initially healed your gut enough to heal your biomarkers at the start? You said it made you hypercatabolic. Not sure what you're asking. Uh, I decided on uh, fruit and potatoes just from research, understanding their nutrient profile, um, the amount of possible allergies to those foods, and just the, the research um, that I did, basically. Also, it had an intuitive hit. Um, so yeah, that's how I, that's how I started. And Andy Tenment, thoughts on water kefir, milk kefir. Um, they can, again, to both foods you have to test. I'm not a big fan of fermented drinks at all. Um, that's just for me personally, but th there's something that I wouldn't test within the first six months of trying to heal. I'd wait till things had solidified, maybe after a year um, that I was healed, then maybe test things like kefir or other things. But some people have had success. I haven't had hardly any clients have any success with a kefir based approach. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what it is. It says man bear, Rob, if I'm able to handle grass fed goat ghee, okay. Would I likely handle raw grass fed aged goat cheese? Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. Butter doesn't have lactose in it. Cheese has lactose in it. It also has carbohydrates in it. So you can do perfectly great on full fat ghee. And then on goat cheese, you might not do that great, but it's definitely a food that you can test. There's a lot of people, if you have high quality cheese, can do really awesome with it. And so you just got to, again, test these foods with biomarker feedback. And that's the only, only way you can truly know if personally a food is going to work for you or not. Uh, Joe Ward, thoughts on protein powder. I've talked about this a lot. Protein powders, green powders, all powdered foods are not going to help your gut biome in any way, shape, or form. You need whole foods. Maybe after the first year, once you've healed, you might be able to reintroduce some high quality protein powders, maybe, um, but generally they don't test well even after people have healed. John B. So there's simply no way to test foods without getting bad itch triggers. No, I mean, you're, you're already triggered and getting itchy anyway. You're not getting necessarily flare ups from the healthy foods that you're eating. You're just going through uh, inflammatory response from your autonomic nervous system. The way that you test foods is not by looking at your skin or flare ups in any way, shape or form. You look at your biomarkers and your biofeedback only because the skin will eventually follow the biomarkers and the biofeedback. So experience, is it possible to heal the skin if you don't have access to pasture raised meat and buy meat who is kind of okay? Yeah, I've had plenty of clients who don't have the ability to get grass fed pastured beef all the time. Maybe they can't afford it. Maybe they live in a different country where it's not available. Um, you got to do the best that you can and try to get the cleanest sources that you can. The main thing with animal products, if you're not going to be able to get grass fed and pastured is you just got to make sure that they're hormone free and antibiotic free. That's kind of the, the bottom line. Ryan Doherty, how often do you Wim Hof? I'm trying to use it more. It's powerful stuff. Every day, I, I do some cold exposure almost every day, mostly in my shower. Lately, I haven't been doing a lot of ice plunges just because of the COVID situation. And just, I usually like to do my ice plunges with groups of people, excuse me. And so um, I, I haven't been doing ice plunges in a big barrel, just cold showers, breath work. That happens pretty much every day. Middleman AD, uh, vitamin D3 supplements if you can't get in the sun every day. No, just get in the sun every day, eat a high-fat diet. And vitamin D supplements, they're pretty benign. They, they probably aren't going to hurt you, but they also might not be doing anything. The best way, the only way to get true vitamin D is from sun with the precursors of saturated fat and cholesterol from animal fats. 
Uh, again, Jose R, what supplements do you take? Vitamins. I don't believe in supplementation. If you have the right diet, you really don't need anything. I don't take any supplements ever at all, having a decade. So Bilal Muhammad says, I've been taking whey protein for a few years and getting gains and have no side effects. So Bilal, that means that you have your, your skin healed. Awesome, dude. Um, how long have you been cured of skin disease? I'm, I'm super curious. And I'm, that's awesome that you're able to have the whey protein. Most people who have healed their skin um, can't during that healing process. So good for you, man. Andy Tennant asked, have you ever eaten testicles? Yes. Uh, my biomarkers improved dramatically after doing so myself. Yeah, testicles, all the organ meats are the absolute best foods in the world. They are powerful, powerful healing medicine for sure. And they're, they're, they're really good. Always raw, what helps with your energy level? This is my only problem now. So if your energy is always low, Generally, it's coming from lack of calories or your macros need to be adjusted. Um, if you're on a high fat, high protein diet, sometimes the protein gets way too much higher than the fat and the fuel source is non-existent. And the body is kind of going through uh, gluconeogenesis, trying to convert that protein into uh, some type of fuel source. So upping the fat slightly, making sure your calories are where they need to be. And obviously getting plenty of sleep and working out will usually do the trick. Renzo, would you say sugar causes most problems because since you cut out, I itch less and dermatitis. Yeah, sugar is a major issue. Obviously, sugar that comes from fruit is much better than processed crap. Um, but, but tons of sugar and tons of carbs in the diet for most people, especially if your diet's not perfectly clean, can definitely cause major, major issues. Joe Ward, do you ever drink beer or wine? No, I don't like beer um, and I don't like wine. I, I will have a, a white wine here and there with my mom once in a while. Um, I drink once in a while. When I drink, it's clear liquids. I do have a full length video on the best alcohols for when you're dealing with eczema that will affect you the least. It's generally the clear liquors, vodka, gin. And for me, Prosecco works really good, really well. Uh, Ryan Lyon, did you have any steroid cream withdrawal? I still get irritated behind my knees where I used to. Yeah, I had, I had some steroid withdrawal. I luckily it wasn't as gnarly as some people cause I didn't use the steroid creams, um, as much as some people do. I have some clients who used powerful steroid creams from the time they were like eight or nine years old until the time they were 40. So luckily I didn't do that. And so my withdrawal from them was just, um, just, uh, you know, probably seven months long. Not not horrible. Andy Tennant, do you ever wear sunscreen? I was talking about this a little earlier, but no, I, I personally don't. I uh, get early morning sun on my full body. I get late afternoon sun on my full body and I cover up during the midday wide brim hat. Um, and yeah, not a, not a fan of sunscreen. John B asks, do Thanksgiving hams, bacon, turkey work for you? Yeah, I eat Thanksgiving ham, turkey, bacon all day, every day. I'm I'm an animal-based eater, so um, I eat high-quality animal foods as my main calorie source, and they all work absolutely amazing for me, yes. They also work absolutely amazing for 99.2% of my clientele, seal their skin. Nice. So Bilal Muhammad said that he's, he's healed his skin about a year and a half ago. Nice. Good for you, man. Uh, Renzo says, what about taking glutamine for healing? Again, supplements aren't going to heal you. You have to just customize the diet. Um, a lot of people want to turn to supplements because they really do think that it's going to do something magic. And unfortunately, I think it sets you up mentally to uh, sabotage long, long term, uh, because if you don't set the foundation 
for the rest of your life now with a basic custom diet movement daily and gentle cleansing, then your chances of healing are zero anyway. So uh, a supplement's not going to make or break the process. Uh, middleman AD, do you notice candida in your clients? Have you any thoughts on natural antifungals? Yeah. Um, a lot of people who have skin disease have some fungal or candida issue. The misconception is people think that if you get rid of candida, then you get rid of your skin disease and it doesn't work that way. Candida is a symptom of the same issue. So when you heal your gut biome and you heal your filtration system and you heal your hormones, that's when the candida has no chance of living or being around. And that's how you absolutely get rid of it. So once your body is in a place of health and balance, Candida doesn't have an overgrowth possibility because it has no need to. Candida is a, a mechanism in the body that is supposed to help clean things up, basically. And it gets out of control when you have too much cleanup to do. Uh, Harat asks, is fresh aloe very worth it topically or consumption. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a nice, a nice thing to, to soothe the skin, but again, it's not going to make or break the, the healing process. Silverback asked, do I eat white rice? Um, I can eat white rice. doesn't really affect me negatively. I just don't eat it because I don't like it. Um, and I just don't eat carbs really. My, my only carbs really come from fruit most of the time. Once in a while I'll have potato. Uh, once in a while I'll have squash or sweet potato. Soul X, ditch the steroids, practice fasted HGH. Yeah, for sure. Ditch the steroids. It's going to help you long term. Sean Sells has been carnivore diet for a week now. How long before I start seeing results? Eating um, a weekend on a carnivore diet, that's good. Um, generally, you're going to not see results with your skin for 6 to 12 months. It takes a long time. With your biomarkers on a carnivore diet, um, it's a good place to start. You probably have to make some adjustments and, and customize it. But with a carnivore approach, you should start to see biomarker shifts, which are the most important thing anyway, within four weeks. Uh, Ryan Lyon asked, do I use any moisturizers maybe in the winter? Yeah, I use a little bit of tallow from uh, my buddy, Brian Sanders. He owns a company called uh, nosatel.org. He's got a tallow based moisturizer called skin food, which is bomb. And I use a little bit of that on my feet and sometimes just, you know, on dry spots um, in the winter time or in the summer. But I, I generally don't have to use any type of moisturizer. Um, I just don't really need it. Um, do you 17 Kyle one, do you really need carbs if you're trying to build muscle? Um, I don't eat hardly any carbs. Um, the year I went from high carb, low fat to ketogenic carnivore, I put on 37 pounds of muscle. So, um, it's more importantly is your hormones and calories. If your hormones are on point and you're getting enough protein and getting enough fats to nourish yourself and you're working out, you're, you're going to be plenty muscular. Middleman AD, how often do you salt flush? How often to salt? I, he just says, how often salt flush? Well, it depends uh, if you're new and you're going through a deep cleansing phase or if you've been doing it for a while and you've already cleansed for a long time. Um, I would say pick up the three phases workbook. That's going to go into a lot of depth on scheduling your cleanses because, again, it, it's so highly individualized without you giving me any background story. I can't really actually help that much. Andy Tennant says, my mom gets pissed when I don't wear sunscreen. Why can I say to her? I don't know. You, it sounds like you might be uh, 18 or under. So I don't know. I don't know how to deal with your mom. I, I don't. If, if my mom at this point was giving me a hard time about wearing sunscreen, I would just give her a hug. 
uh, and say, I love you and not wear sunscreen. John B, big question. So if I eat food and start itching maybe 30 minutes later, that doesn't mean it should give up on the food immediately. Exactly. You have to use the biomarkers. Um, within the biomarkers, there are things like extreme itch and inflammation that you have to check into, but generally, no. Says Tom Withers, will green tea or matcha help while going through TSW? It won't help, but it also won't hurt um, unless you have problems, major problems with plant toxins or green tea in specific. But in general, um, green tea works really well as a caffeine source and um, it's not going to not going to hurt. Renzo, did you notice any skin changes when you transitioned from high carb, low fat to keto carnivore? Yeah, major skin differences. Um, my skin is a kind of a more of a uh, supple feel. It, it's way more moist. When I was vegan, I had to use moisturizers a lot. Um, the coloring of my skin, it uses the sun completely different. I kind of always have a nice tan. Um, my skin health hasn't really changed. I haven't had a flare up in over 10 years. I, I, I didn't, I don't deal with that anymore. So as far as when I went from plant-based to keto carnivore, there wasn't anything skin disease related, but the overall luster of my skin health did improve my hair on my beard and the hair on my head started growing a lot faster. My nails started growing a lot faster noticeably. And I will say that the whites in the color of my eyes, have uh, brightened up quite a bit since um, going carnivore. Soul X, hearing with lots of, uh, hearing lots of lo folks dealing with depression here, went through similar issues and changed everything by going plant powered with fasted fitness and lived life my way. Good for you, Soul X. That's, that's great. Depression is a challenging thing to deal with. Um, a lot of my clients, started getting depressed from going plant-based. So again, you have to understand it's a fully customized type of thing. But if you're having major depression, it means that several aspects of your inner world are out of balance. And once you get those balanced, your hormones, your sleep, your stress management, your support system, what you do with your time, um, it's gonna make the healing process so much better for sure. Silverback, I know you don't count calories. Do you just eat till you're satisfied? Um, I don't count calories, but I generally on any given day could basically think about what I ate and give you almost the exact amount of calories that I did eat. So I generally do know where I'm at, um, but I let my calories fluctuate major from day to day, 100% based on activity level, what I did the day before, uh, where I'm at as far as if I'm trying to do a cleansing day or a detox week or whatever. But generally, um, I eat when I'm hungry. I stop when I'm satisfied. And that generally is about two times a day. But like I said, my caloric intake varies greatly. I'll have days where I'll have 1,600 calories and I'll have days where I'll have 5,000 calories. Um, over time, I sit right around 3,000 calories per day right now. And that maintains, um, I'm 190 pounds, uh, five foot 11, five foot 10 and a half, five foot 11, 190 pounds right now. So, and, and that I sustain really easy on about an average of 3000 for that. Ryan Lyon, do you eat any uh, berries or melon? Yeah, I do. Um, I eat berries and I eat melon uh, not very often. Uh, the fruit that I eat most is things like uh, apples. Apples and pears are my favorite fruit. I like mangoes as well. Uh, but generally, I'm, I'm eating apples and pears. They're, they're my go-to. Soul X, detox the body from unnatural contaminants that destroy body's natural biochemistry. Yes, very true. Gianna, yo, Rob, just want to say thanks for helping me with my eczema. Chiana, you're so welcome. I'm happy that I'm able to help and I wish you tons of luck in the future. Um, my life is about trying to help people just like you. So thanks for letting me know that, um, you know, it's, it's helping you out. I, I wish you a ton of luck. 
Den Dents, big fan. Always good advice. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Zahar Bai, advice for one-year-olds who have eczema. Um, man, to be honest, I, I really wish that um, I had better advice for kids. I just have no experience with them. And they're in such a developmental stage. The, the thing that works best for kids is you just got to make sure you're eating clean um, and providing the right environment for them um, so that when they can get to a certain age and do some of the cleansing practices and, and take things to another level hormonally, they can do so. Um, but I, I'm sorry. I really do wish I had more information for the little guys who are suffering because I know it's really hard. Johnny B. Bam. Super chat. Good for you, man. Thanks, Johnny. Um, this is for you, dude. Thank you, guys. Uh, donate for this man. Potatoes, all meats is where you think I should go. Gosh, Johnny, I don't know. Um, I think that customizing, first of all, thanks for thanks for the super chat and the shout out. Much love, man. Um, potatoes and meat could be a great place to start. Fruit and meat could be a great place to start. Fully carnivore could be a great place to start. Um, there's usually a couple different really good starting places. Some I just mentioned. And the key is starting there and staying with that long enough to set a baseline that then you can see when you make your refinements and changes, how that baseline changes and how your biomarkers affect that baseline. And that's kind of the whole game is you start off with a certain diet and then you refine it and refine it and refine it and refine it. And before you know it, um, you have gone through every food group and you have a fully customized diet, which is so easy right now. I don't have to do any type of my diet tastes delicious. It's super fun. And I never, ever, ever have to think about it. Um, second nature. I know exactly what foods to eat, what foods to avoid and you know, what foods uh, are neutral for me. And that's, that's the process of customizing the diet and why once you customize it, it actually gets really easy. Ryan Lyon, thank you for your consistent message. It's refreshing to have a strong, tougher guy. I'm not a I'm not a tough guy, Ryan. But I, I, thanks for the the shout out and thanks for the thanks for the super chat. Um, I, I I try, man. Um, I don't consider myself a tough guy, though. Um, I'm just like everyone else. I struggled my ass off for a majority of my life with this skin disease, and you know when when you go through something. Um, that you guys are going through and you get to the other side and you feel what life feels like the, the difference you want to tell everybody and you want to help as many people as you can. And so that's, that's where my, you know, my mission statement for the website and for the YouTube channel and for the Instagram is, is to try to outline every possible protocol that can help you guys cure your skin disease forever. I would like everyone who has skin disease to be without skin disease because I know that every single person can heal themselves. Soul X, try ashwagandha, folks. Works quite well for mood. Yeah, it, it, it can. It can also be very toxic for certain people. So again, watch out for the supplements. Not, not usually a great thing in your healing process. Sahara B, how often do you moisturize? I talked about this earlier in the video. I, I don't often moisturize. I don't really need to. Dan Dance, you know how it feels and wouldn't wish it on anyone, hence your passion for sharing. Yes, I've been there most of my life, man. Uh, Silverback, when you strength train, lifting weights, do you notice any fatigue from not having? No, the opposite. Um, I think my body, it just naturally does best on fat. Um, my strength, for instance, <clears throat> when I was vegan, uh, my pull-up routine was a set of 13, a set of 12, a set of eight, and then like a set of five. Um, three months into being carnivore, I was doing sets of 25, 22, 20, 18. Um, my strength went through the roof as a carnivore. I have a uh, client who lives in Dubai who's a personal trainer who's been working out for 30 years. And when we switched him over to a carnivore and fruit-based diet, he has added – hundred pounds to his squat in six months, um, like 80 pounds to his bench. And, and this is like gains that are unheard of for someone who's been working out that long. So no carbs for him either. Uh, 
a folatinio, what do I mean when I mean biomarkers? Um, First of all, check out some of the videos. I do have a lot of videos about the biomarker system, but specifically your biomarkers is the feedback that your body is giving you. So your sex drive, your daily poop, your daily sleep, your energy, your mood, your appetite, your body fat, your body weight. I think I mentioned it, but how you sleep. Do you have a good night's sleep or not? Um, all of the body's biofeedback mechanisms that you can't, you know, you can't trick. They just happen and they're black or white. So those are your, those are your general biomarkers. There's, there's more of them, but that's a general. Ryan Lyon, I think we were in the wrong time as veganism and plant-based propaganda was so big 10 years ago. I think future eczema sufferers will heal faster with more people going more carnivore. I, I agree, Ryan, 100%. So far over the last four years, um, the clients that I've worked with that have healed um, mostly are on an animal-based diet and they heal significantly faster um, than when I was plant-based. Almost all of my plant-based clients um, who made progress with their skin ended up not having a good end result. So yeah, I, I agree. There's a lot of uh, vegan propaganda and, and there's a lot of money backing it now. Um, so it's, I don't think the propaganda is going to go away very soon. Um, but I also will predict that in 10 years, the same wave of trendiness for a carnivore animal-based diet will be definitely happening. Luke Smith, what if apples and pears, oranges trigger a psoriasis reaction? I feel like all types of sugars, if I, if it's fruit or otherwise trigger psoriasis again, are you judging by your biomarker feedback or your skin? Because if you're judging by your skin, you're not going to be able to, to know anything. Um, but also a more straight to the point and straightforward answer to you is if fruit sugar makes you feel like it messes you up and just don't eat it. You don't really need it. You can go super low carb, um, really high keto um, and have awesome success. John B, another super chat. Thanks, bud. Thoughts on all seasonings. Will you sleep? prove immediately if you eat the right foods. Um, the customization process of the diet takes a little bit. So once you start eating really clean and the right general foods for yourself, it's probably going to take about three weeks for your body to become fat adapted or to create the right enzyme approach or for your gut biome to flip over and be able to adjust to the new foods. But within four weeks or a month, the biomarkers, including your sleep, should be getting to a lot better place. It is an ongoing refinement process. It's That's why it takes quite a long time. As far as seasoning goes, you want to keep your seasoning as minimal as possible, salt and pepper only. Um, you can't really do any spicy, crazy spices and herbs, paprika, crushed red pepper, all that stuff, um, jalapeno. I know that's not a, an herb, but those types of things, uh, those spices are mess your skin up bad. Daniel says, have you ever had any clients that don't have skin issues, but still want your help? Yes, I work um, with a lot of clients. Um, I do business coaching um, and I usually do two or three of those per month. And I also work with a lot of people who are just trying to heal their gut biome. Um, I also work with a lot of people who are just trying to incorporate a carnivore diet into their life who are athletes. So yeah, I work with a wide variety of people these days. Um, Previous to being an eczema coach, and I've been an eczema coach for almost a decade, um, I'm, I'm a behavioral scientist and a yoga therapist and a personal trainer. So I've always been in the coaching realm and I've always been um, working with people privately and working you know, with, with individuals, helping them in some way. So I do have a kind of a variety of different clients these days. <laughs> Falco, drink of water real quick, guys. So we're hitting about the hour mark. Um, I'll keep rolling with you guys um, for a bit. And uh, as long as you guys have questions, I'm, I'm down to uh, give you as many answers as I can. Let's see. Falco does stuff. If you're doing well with your diet and your biomarkers improve for, say, a month, then mess up once, 
how much progress progress has diminished? That's a good question. Um, it's different for everybody, but I always tell my clients, like, don't get too bogged down if you mess up. Just do the cleansing routine, the protocol that I create for you, um, and then start eating healthy again right away and just get back to it. Whether it sets you back a little bit or a lot, or maybe just for some people, not too much at all. One little mess up isn't going to make or break your healing, but obviously you want to, you want to do your best. For me, part of the customization process of the diet is making the diet so that it tastes so good that you don't have to have cheat meals and you know where your wiggle room is. And that's one of the keys to long-term sustainable success is knowing what to eat, what not to eat and what's neutral and creating a good diet that tastes good to you. I don't eat so clean because I, I'm so disciplined and I'm white knuckling it all the time. I look like a disciplined eater because I'm eating all the foods that I actually enjoy eating. And, and that's a big part of the customization process is you have to enjoy your diet or you can't sustain it. Rex Scoturn, I started keto four weeks ago and my hives and eczema have gotten crazy. Happens to a lot of people, Rex, um, happens to a lot of my clients. Many times during the transition phase to fat adaptation, especially for keto, um, it can be kind of harsh. You can get keto flu, keto rash. Also, if you're doing keto and eating a ton of plant toxins, plant foods, and they don't, they don't work well for you, because remember, some people can't handle plant toxins hardly at all. So if you're keto, but you're eating a lot of plants, um, they can be causing some absolutely major, major issues for you. Soul X, sustainable nourishment, and he shows plants. Actually, the, the vegan movement isn't very sustainable because it's it's built on monocropping. And the only proven system to work is regenerative farming, which you can't have regenerative farming without pastured animals. Um, pastured animals combined with moving your, your crops and, and putting them in the right places at the right time can absolutely regenerate the soil. And that's 100% sustainable. But a plant only soil environment is, is one of the reasons why our soil is so degraded right now. It's a major issue. Then dance. It's 3 a.m. in UK. Just wanted to pop in and show my applications. Maybe you meant appreciation. My partner suffers with skin conditions. Once she went keto and hydrated, now clearing right up. Good day and good night to you. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good sleep. Tracy Leonard, what is the reason for no coffee? No, it's not that coffee is just a trigger food. Um, just testing it over and over and over with over 1500 clients. There's not, the coffee just doesn't work. It's not the caffeine. Caffeine from green tea can work really good. Rex Scuttern says, what would you recommend I eat instead? Of plants, just more animal fats, more animal protein, especially if you're carnivore keto, just skip the plants altogether. Uh, Johnny B, chocolate generally is a trigger food for skin disease. Um, it can be challenging, especially during the healing process. Chocolate many times reacts very similar in the body to uh, that coffee does. So uh, unfortunately, even like 100% dark chocolate, healthy stuff can mess you up. Soul X respectfully disagrees that regenerative farming is the only proven way to regenerate the soil. Okay. I got you, Den Dance. I saw the appreciation. Thanks, bud. Have a good sleep. What's up, Francis? How's it going, bud? It's been a bit. Daniel Morcarda, if you only try one food at a time, not in the beginning, you can do a group of foods. The beginning, um, there's a lot more emphasis on understanding how to um, get the right caloric range and to eat minimal and to get your macros set. Um, once you have um, gotten to a certain place with your biomarkers and you're starting to test more foods, 
doing similar food groups or one or two foods at a time and eating them long enough to see what they do to your biomarker feedback. That's, that's really all you have to do. Uh, you've heard Rex Scott, Scott turn says that uh, he's heard that carnivore wrecks your gut from other YouTubers. Yeah. I'm sure they're plant-based vegan or <laughs> I've been, Carnivore based, animal based for almost four years. My my gut is fully healed. The best food for closing your your gut, sealing it off, is saturated animal fats, bar none. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's tons of YouTubers that will say anything. There's YouTubers that advise everyone to drink their piss and eat fruit only. So the wonderful world of YouTube. Always raw. Do you know why Frank Tofano has failed on carnivore? I don't know. I mean, he interviewed me on his channel a couple years ago. Um, I don't. I don't know anything about him. And it's not really about carnivore solving all problems. It's always about customizing your diet. So maybe he hasn't taken the time to fully customize his diet. I'm not sure. Ryan Lyon, why Nebraska instead of LA? I hate LA. LA to me is no offense if you live there. I, I grew up in San Diego. Um, I've lived in San Diego. I still live there sometimes during the year, sometimes three to six months throughout the year. Um, and um, Nebraska is where my family is originally from. And we all migrated from San Diego back to Omaha over the past 15 years. I just actually moved here full time last October. Um, in 2018, I lived in uh, Manhattan and New York City on Wall Street, right next to Trump Towers. And then um, the, in 2020, I was living part time in San Diego, part time in Phoenix and part time in Omaha. Um, and now I'm basically Omaha based. Francis, LOL, oh, LOL, you, Soul X, ha ha. So X, piss diet, LOL. All right. Boom. Bye, Soul X. So this is a this is a no troll channel. Thanks for coming though. Diana Buller, what if you don't have access to grass-fed beef and organic stuff? If I'm worried that there's lots of antibiotics in the meat that sell at the supermarkets, um, pretty much every supermarket you can get antibiotic-free, hormone-free meats. They don't necessarily have to be um, grass-fed. I mean, grass-fed pasture-raised is, is the best, and it works really great. And you can actually order it online, especially some of these online services where you buy it in bulk. Um, you can get it for pretty cheap. Um, so... Um, I would say at least go for antibiotic hormone free meat if you can. John B, what's your main job in life? Uh, I am an eczema coach. I've been an eczema coach for 10 years. Uh, before that, I, I personal train. I'm a yoga therapist, uh, entrepreneur. Um, I've owned yoga studios. I've started juice, juice centers. I've ghost written. I've, I've done a lot of things, but I've been primarily an eczema coach full time for the past eight and a half years, almost a decade. And do I like football? Yes, I love football. Uh, I played football in high school um, as an all state quarterback in Southern California at Cathedral Catholic. And uh, my favorite team in the world is, of course, I live in Nebraska. Go Big Red. I'm all about Nebraska football, baby. And we're about four weeks away from the first game, and I'm super excited. Thanks for asking. So it looks like some of the questions are starting to slow down, which is cool. Um, I'm going to roll on here a little bit longer. But what I will say is for those of you who are looking for my help in the comment section or not in the comment section, but in the description box, there's links for everything. Scanessa, one-on-one -on -one coaching, the three phases workbook, which again, the three phases workbook will be obsolete and not for sale probably within a month. Um, most likely in a month, there will be no three phases workbook. So if you've been thinking about getting it, um, I would get it now because it's going to be gone and it's going to be gone forever. 
Uh, raw, raw potatoes do not help eczema, BWK. Rex, cheers from Scotland. Cheers, buddy. Zahara Bai, how many hours should you sleep per night? It's a, I think everyone's different. I think the advice of eight to nine hours every night, that's, un, that's unrealistic for me. I'm like a six and a half to seven hours, and that's where I feel the best. If I get anything over eight hours, I actually feel super groggy all day, and I don't like it. But everyone's different. I think somewhere between six and nine hours for most people is going to be the sweet spot. But again, customization is key, understanding your own rhythms. Um, you might need less or more sleep depending on who you are. So Marcel Adrian, um, I think, sorry if I butchered your name. What's the best diet for rosacea in particular? I'm not going to try to sound like a jerk here um, or beat a dead horse, but a customized diet is the only diet that heals all skin issues. There is no trendy diet that will just cure all people uh, or the best for a specific condition. You have to go through the process of really honing in on the foods that are custom for you. So teacher Eric Robinson, two questions. Poultry is not listed in your workbook, workbook for meat options during healing phase two. Has it been a trigger food for you and your clients in plain white popcorn, a trigger food for your clients? Yes, popcorn is not a good food. It's the seeds and kernels can absolutely destroy uh, your intestines. Chicken is in the three phases workbook. You can do chicken bone broth. Um, I think that you might've maybe missed something there. Always raw. That's so, so awesome, man. I didn't heal you. You healed you. You did the work. I'm just giving you um, the protocols and giving you the data. But pat yourself on the back, dude, or or lady. Um, you earned your healthy skin because you put in the work. Um, and I'm so glad that I could be a part of it. Teacher Eric Robinson, your three-phase workbook program has done wonders for my healing my body and skin. Thanks for everything. You're welcome, man. Um, I really do hope that you guys jump on the the online course that I created because it it's actually a little little bit better than the three phase workbook as far as clarity, as far as um, the system that I've created. It's just a, an updated, refined version of what I do, and I've really taken the work that I do with clients. And the work that I do more in real time and infused it into a course because the course is, is made with videos instead of instead of writing. And, and as I said at the beginning of the video, I, I'm not a writer. I don't like writing. I know I've written several books, but I just I don't enjoy the process as much as I do just being on camera and, and, and sharing my knowledge with you guys. And the course is it's got PDFs and it's got workbooks with it. But. It's, it's a video format, so I think it's going to hit home a lot better for people. Luke Smith, what are some good cooking oils to use with meat? Um, I wouldn't use any oils at all. I would use animal fats whenever you're cooking. Um, tallow, duck fat, butter, those are my favorites. Um, animal fats withstand the heat amazingly and all plant oils struggle. Even the, the ones that can stand up to the heat the best, they all struggle. Um, the only plant oils that I would eat occasionally would be olive oil, coconut oil, and maybe for some people after being tested, avocado oil. But all seed oils are absolute poison, and I wouldn't touch them or anything with them in them. Zehra Bai. No, I'm not on, I'm not on TikTok. Uh, I don't plan on being on TikTok. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Snapchat or TikTok. Um, if someone wants to reach out to me and um, edit videos for me and put them on TikTok, I'd be open to it. But I don't. I don't want to spend any time on that app. <laughs> Ryan uh, Rahat Chaudhry, the, what's my best advice for topical steroid withdrawal? Customize your diet, gently cleanse, move your body daily, give it time, be patient, use your biomarkers as your main, um, your, your main signal of things are working and B12 
be very, very patient with the process and focus on the solution. It's the same as for healing eczema, dermatitis, and psoriasis. Same, same protocols will eliminate the TSW as fast as possible. Ryan Lyon, did you get the vaccine? Also, have you... Yeah, I travel. Um, I don't travel overseas uh, at all. I, I don't enjoy flying, but I travel all the time. Um, not during COVID, it's been rough, but generally a typical year for me, uh, I will travel for months, months at a time. I'll be in San Diego, I'll be in Phoenix, I'll be in Colorado, I'll be in New York, I'll be in Nebraska, I'll be in South Dakota. Um, I like the mountains, I like the forests, and I like places that have lakes. Uh, I like adventuring, I like kayaking, I like stand-up paddle boarding, I like big, long, crazy hikes. I, I climbed Mount Whitney a couple years ago. Um, so I, I just enjoy being outside and I do enjoy traveling around different parts of the United States. And I have, I have friends that I visit um, in the places that I mentioned. So I frequent those places and um, yeah, I, I travel, I travel quite a bit. <clears throat> Hawaii is on my list though. I, I plan on getting to Hawaii um, at, at some point pretty, pretty soon. John B, how can I get you my info? In the description box of this video and all of my videos, John, Johnny, is links for private coaching, um, everything, my website. Once you get on my website, we'll be able to connect pretty easily. So just go down onto the description box and click the link for consulting and it'll uh, get you where you need to be. Rex, I would love to come to the highlands of Scotland. I am a Scottish descent. Um, I have Scottish blood. So Scotland is on the bucket list for sure, man. BWK, how about colloidal silver for internal and or external cleansing? Check out my video. I have a full length video on um, colloidal silver. It can be somewhat helpful, but again, it's similar to other things, you know, glutathione, glutamine. People ask all the time, won't these things really help you? And they, they won't do what the diet and the lifestyle will do. They might add 3%, 5%. They might slightly move things along faster, maybe. But I would I always bring people back to first get really good at the basics. Have you customized your diet? Are you living a very healthful life? If not, that's your problem. You got to start there. Um, once you're doing that and you're really consistent with all those things, foundational things, then experimenting with little things like colloidal silver make a little bit more sense. Um, but it, colloidal silver can be, can be helpful for sure. Uh, Silverback, have you ever tried dairy kefir and does it work for you? I, I mentioned this big time in the beginning of the video. Um, I don't do um, I don't do kefir at all. I don't like it. I don't do any fermented foods uh, besides some sauerkraut juice here and there. Um, kefir hasn't tested well with my client base either. I have had only a very few people, um, one in particular out of 15, damn near 1500 um, that did really good on goat kefir. Um, so I don't, I don't mess with it too much. It doesn't test well for me. Um, so, but Hey, you know, once you've gotten through the process and solidified your biomarkers it could be a, a food to test. It could be a food to test right away. Again, it's very individualized. Marcel Adrian, sorry to ask another question. Ask as many questions as you have. That's what I'm here for. So no worries, Marcel. Um, she, Marcel is asking uh, for advice for a beginner water faster. Uh, I've done a lot of research, but I find it difficult to start. Honestly, um, for water fasting, start with one day. Uh, and again, water fasting isn't going to cure you. Water fasting is just one tool to give the digestion and, and, and the autophagy a deeper place to go to. But if you're not changing the fundamentals of how you live and what you're eating, all the water fasting in the world is just going to be a total waste of time. So 
Um, start really slow. If you're trying to water fast, start with intermittent fasting, start with OMAD, start with a one water fasting day and, um, and, and less is more with water fasting for sure. Fertile Vision Swa. That's probably not your right name, but again, I'm sorry. Uh, our sauna is good for detoxing in your opinion. Uh, this isn't my opinion, but this is my experience that both cold exposure and saunas, especially the combination of both of them, are amazing for healing. Anything that improves your body's circulation, autophagy, and ability to fight free radicals, plus address the fight or flight mechanism in the body is going to be ultra important for healing. So yeah, saunas, cold exposure, both really awesome. Luke Smith, recommend massages coupled with working out frequency. Yeah, heck yeah. If you can get massages, get them every damn day. <laughs> Honestly, massages are so wonderful for stress management, for aches and pains, for your lymphatic system. They're great for autophagy. Um, yeah, man, if you can get massages, do them as many and as much as you possibly can. They're a great tool. I'm going to stroll through some of these. I'm going to go down and see if there's any uh, questions that I've, I've missed. Helix, hi. Yeah, boy. My uh, One of my high school teammates, uh, Luke Walton's dad, Bill Walton, went to Helix. You should look him up if you don't know who he is. Um, yeah, man. So I went to Cathedral Prep, but it wasn't Cathedral Catholic when I went there. It was called Uni High back then. It was USDHS. Um, so... We played you guys uh, in football and we played you in basketball, we played you twice in baseball and have to say we destroyed you. But my high school sport teams were kind of uh, kind of crazy. Uh, we were nationally ranked in every sport we recruited. We were a big time sports school. But that's cool, man. San Diego boy. He looks high. Good for you. Hi, Rob. What is your website? My website is holistichealthactivation.com. This is from Cindy Hickman. Um, it's linked in the description box everywhere. Um, all the links will take you to my website. Um, so, yep, it's holistichealthactivation.com. Massage gun, Brian Lyon. There you go. JJ. What is the best moisturizer for eczema? It's going to be different for everybody. Um, coconut oil, jojoba oil, shea butter, tallow is bomb. Um, some of the tallow-based moisturizers like the skin food from nose to tell org is bomb, 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 bomb. Daniel Mercado, what about camping? I camp all the time. I do um, overlanding and I do long camping trips. So, yeah, camping is my jam. I will go camping for a month at a time. Justin Kadar, Cater. Sorry if I messed your names up. Again, guys, my, my name ability sucks. So I apologize. I mean, no disrespect. Okay. Hey, Rob, can you explain why animal fats work well for your clients? I'm using heavy cream and butter and seeing some great results, but want to know why. Uh, saturated fat, cholesterol, they have all of the um, nutrients that – nourish the body and heal the skin and can seal the gut lining. So it's the, it's the most bioavailable food and nutrients there is in the world is animal foods, especially for humans. So um, that's, that's generally why I think they work so well. They're the exact nutrients our bodies need to produce skin, healthy skin. Uh, Harat, I think that's how you spell your name or say your name. Opinion on acupuncture to support healing. It's great. I think all of the healing modalities Meditation, yoga therapy, qigong, acupuncture, acupressure, Thai massage, massage, all of it is absolutely wonderful. And all of it can really lead to um, a more holistic approach to healing. And I think that one of the things that people can understand is that the mindset and the psychology of healing, what you really want to do is you want to be so focused on the solution that you have no energy for the problem. And that cuts out 
almost all the pain and depression from going through skin disease healing um, and things like these healing modalities that deal with stress and deal with your lymphatic system and make you feel so wonderful, do an awesome job of taking your mind off the problem and putting your mind into a good place, focusing on the solution. You're welcome, Justin Kadar. It's probably Justin Cater. I don't know. Any thoughts on earthing from bird somebody? I think it's great. I don't wear shoes very often. I like to walk around in the grass and go outside all the time with bare feet. Um, on a more scientific level, there are negative ions in grass. There's negative ions all in nature. And if you're putting your feet directly onto the negative ions, they could be doing something very positive for you. Negative ions are needed for detoxification and for a balanced, balanced human. System trend. Rob, do you advise against antimicrobial or antibacterial soaps for daily use? Yes. Um, although you can get away um, more on the surface of the skin with antibacterial and antimicrobial and antifungal things. But again, anytime you're putting harsh inflammatory causing things on your skin, your body has to deal with that trauma, whether it's on the inside or the outside. So um, you, you may want to use a very gentle version of those soaps, or you may want to use them very sparingly, only when you need to. Um, yeah. Uh, silverback, are blood type diets BS? Yes, they have been, um, by every nutritional institution who studied them, they've been debunked. Um, now, I've been paying attention to my client's ethnicity, where their genes come from, and I have noticed that there is some variation between customizing the diet for, let's say, someone from Japan compared to someone from the Netherlands, um, or someone from Mexico City compared to someone from Northern Canada. And when I, when you kind of do have to take into account what your genes and the history of your people have been eating forever. And that, and that can, that can make a difference. And for instance, I'm Scandinavian, I'm Swedish, I'm, I'm a Viking and the Nordic people, we've been eating dairy and fish for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds forever, for as long as we've existed. It's been a fish and dairy diet. So it makes sense that cream and fish and high fat foods works really awesome for me. Looks like you guys' questions are starting to slow up, which is totally cool. I'm going to let this roll for maybe another few minutes if the questions. I'm going to um, scroll on through. Um, going, going through this. Going through the questions. Yeah, then dance. I agree. With, with kids, you really want to educate them and you really want to give them the foundation of long-term health, which is a customized diet, lots of movement, lots of playing outdoors, as little time in front of the TV and as little time in front of the computer screen as possible, especially at a young age. Um, lots of sunshine, lots of fun, lots of laughter. Um, and you can install in children, they're so smart and they're sponges and they can adhere to advanced techniques so much faster than adults can. So don't hold back with your kids. Educate the crap out of them. Teach them the mindset. Teach them the solution-oriented, task-oriented mindset, and they'll pick it up fast, and they'll dominate. Uh, Dan Yang, uh, question from earlier. This, this was a question from earlier. Dark chocolate, yes, it's a trigger food, unfortunately. Ricky G, Bro Science 101. Hey Rob, red light therapy. What are your thoughts? 
Um, so far, the the Juve and other red light therapies have worked pretty well. Um, I have a Juve in I have a sauna. This little black thing right here is my bathroom. And it's really big, and I have a sauna on that side of it. And it's got two big old Juves in it. And uh, I, I hit the Juve up very often. I love it. Uh, Silverback, do you still eat honey, and do you use it as a pre-workout? No, I, I right now I'm not eating any honey at all, and I don't usually – eat anything before I work out. Some days I'll have uh, my matcha green tea latte, which has raw cream in it. So I'll have, you know, 400 calories of pure fat. Um, but generally I'll do that in the morning and then my workouts are either right after I'm done eating my green tea or later on in the afternoon, fully fasted. And it just, it works fine for me. I don't, I don't do any pre-workouts. I, I don't, Luke Smith, it's true that for every seven years of bad eating habits, it takes one year of cleansing and detoxing to reverse. Um, I would say that that quantification uh, has no merit <laughs> at all. Like, I don't know where you pulled that from, but no, it, it, timelines are different for everybody. You can have someone who's been eating like crap their whole life and their body can handle it perfectly fine. I have had teammates in college who were complete fast food addicts and they were shredded and had great digestion and great skin and all their blood work was great. And now they're, you know, my age, we're, we're all in our forties now and they're still super healthy. So um, some people are just lucky how your body deals with toxic food is going to be different for everybody. Um, so I would say that, you know, seven years takes one year of detoxing. It's probably not right, but who knows? Uh, the illiberal autist, what are the least triggering spices in your experience? Salt and pepper. Those are really the only, only ones. Um, Dunny rabbit. How about when I eat kale? My, well, kale's a major trigger food for most people. I, I wouldn't recommend eating kale to anybody. Um, it is a cruciferous vegetable has super horrible fiber profile and it's filled with anti-nutrients and plant toxins. So, I don't recommend kale in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Hera, do you think EMF toxicity is overblown? Um, I don't own a router, but should I be more aware? I don't know. I mean, it's definitely a possibility. I, I think that, you know, things that we can't see can definitely hurt us. Um, I keep my EMF way away from me. I have it in an EMF cylinder on the other side of my house, as far away from where I'm at, um, in my bedroom when I sleep, no computer, no phone, no nothing. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of avoid the EMFs, but I'm not sure if it's huge or if it's little or anything. Right mind beats. I've noticed that honey and potatoes tend to bring back my seborrheic dermatitis symptoms. Do these work well with most of your clients or is it touch and go? Generally, most of my clients can do some honey and some potatoes, but generally you have to mind where your carbohydrate intake is. If you're eating a ton of potatoes and honey and your carbs are growing well over 100 grams a day, you're, you're most likely going to have problems. Um, so that might be the issue. Also, are you judging your, your progress based on having flare-ups or are you judging your progress based on customizing your diet through biomarker feedback? Because if you're looking at your skin, it's, it's really going to be a very confusing battle. Um, and if you look at your biomarkers, it's a very obvious kind of way of doing it. Um, Silverback, what are your thoughts on Plantains and yucca. I eat plantains once in a while. Um, I don't like yucca. I, I, yucca is not a major trigger food, but I, I don't I don't just personally don't like it. Freddie Torres. Hey, bro. I'm just checking in with you. Wish your YouTube channel for a long time. A big fan of yours. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Thanks for the support. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you. Uh, BWK, does stress trigger eczema? Everything triggers eczema 
until you have balanced everything. So if you have an out of balance stress response and you're stressed, yeah, stress is going to be a major issue. Um, but you can take away all the stress in the world. And if you haven't customized your diet, you don't move your body. Uh, it's nothing's, nothing's really going to happen. And once you've healed your gut biome and your hormones and your immune system is really bumping, the way your body deals and handles stress is absolutely completely different. It's a whole, whole different game at that point. Uh, Joe Ward, how do you wash your face uh, and body? I have some videos showing my routine, um, but generally um, I just use Bronner's um, or I use a tallow soap and that's it. Um, the Bronner soap is really, really clean and easy um, and it's very accessible. The only thing with the Bronner's is you don't want to use peppermint. You don't want to use lavender. Um, but the other ones work really well. I shower a lot. I shower sometimes twice a day. I usually will wash my face once or twice a week. Um, generally in the shower, I wash my pits and crotch and call it a day. I don't have, uh, <laughs> I don't really wear deodorant. I'm a very not smelly person. Uh, I just, I just don't have a lot of body odor. Uh, Roach master, do you still do coffee enemas? So my cleansing routine is on a quarterly basis. So about every three to four months, I do a focused either week or a few days of cleansing. And generally they do include coffee enemas. Yeah, Ryan Lyon, same thing with me. Uh, he says, I love how on the carnivore diet, I lost that annoying fiber gut pouch. I call that the vegan fermentation pocket. Um, same for me. If you go back and you actually study my old pictures on Instagram and on YouTube as a vegan, I was very thin. I weighed about 165 pounds and I was muscular and lean, but the very bottom of my abs always had a little thing, which is not a big deal. Some people have that and it looks perfectly wonderful, beautiful. For me though, it looked funny. I got a shape, out of, not out of shape, but out of place. Like it was just like a weird thing. And I would say 30 days into keto carnivore, uh, my abs went from my nipples all the way down to my balls. It was like the flattest it's ever been, and it remains completely flat to this day. BWK, do probiotics help? Um, not all probiotics, but what I have found is that Skinessa, which is linked in the description box, um, helps good. It's a, it's a solid, solid probiotic that helps a lot. says, Harat, sometimes I only crave raw carnivore. Why do you think that is? Should I go with that? If you're craving raw meat, you better eat that raw meat. Um, if I enjoyed eating raw meat and I craved it, I'd eat it. I'd eat it. Nothing else but raw meat. It's probably the best possible food that you can eat, especially if you can handle raw organ meat. Your raw egg yolks and raw organ meat is straight medicine. It is medicine. Uh, my bunny rabbit asks, what are my thoughts on acai gum? Um, I don't know, dude, or miss lady buddy. Um, I don't eat acai. Um, I had a, when I was vegan, I had an acai bowl and started walking to a friend's house and something happened. The reaction, maybe it was real bad acai, but it, it hurt my stomach so bad that it almost made me pass out. And I was, you know, walking on a busy street in San Diego. So I don't, I hate acai. Um, not a fan of it at all. Um, and I don't eat gum. So I'm, I'm not the right person to ask on that one. Roger Master Flex, uh, answered this one already. I don't, I don't like uh, kefir at all, personally. It hasn't tested well with clients either. Same with kombucha. Um, some raw kefir from, you know, goats could possibly be a food to test further down the process for some people. And like I said, I have had one client who um, on raw goat kefir did really well. And he was primarily drinking that. Um, so the raw goat kefir, uh, the teeniest percentage of clients it's worked for, 
one person. Um, so I would say it's a food to test later on. Ooh. Sorry about that. I just got crazy. There's an earthquake. I'm just kidding. There's no earthquakes in Omaha. There are tornadoes though, and there's crazy, crazy thunderstorms. <laughs> hey, Kevin, are you watching? <laughs> Thanks, bud. Kevin's my boy, a business partner, an awesome coach. And uh, he just said the live stream looks like it's going good. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate you, buddy. Talk to you soon. Ryan Lyon, do you ever want the convenience of a place like Chipotle to get the meat and guac bowl, for example, maybe in a pinch? No, uh, Chipotle doesn't sound good to me. Fast food just – food with crappy ingredients makes me feel shitty. So I, I, don't, I don't crave those foods at all. And it's super convenient to uh, go to the store and buy some smoked salmon and eat it. It's faster than fast food. So uh, it, convenience is for me about preparation. Um, and also just kind of knowing the stores around my neighborhood where if I'm in a bind, I can bump in and get some fruit or whatever. For me, if the worst case scenario happened, like I was like, um, starving and gonna die and had to eat some fast food i would find a burger joint that doesn't use vegetable oils on their grill and i would just get a bunch of hamburger patties and eat those plain bunny rabbit i ate bananas and milk for a month and all my digestive issues went away is eating the same thing healthy yeah especially in the beginning eating a very consistent minimal diet um one that's based on just a few foods in the very beginning. If you're a person that can roll like that, that's ideal. That's an amazing way to do it. Silverback asked me, um, I've done some videos about testosterone and GH. Um, yeah, my, my sex drive is high. Um, it was non-existent as a vegan. My last three years as a vegan, I might as well have been a priest. Um, no sex drive. Uh, two days into carnivore and it was like, I felt like I was 15 years old and every woman, every human just looked beautiful. Um, and yeah, my testosterone is very high and my sex drive is, is noticeably higher. Chris Lowe, what's up, Chris? Will we be able to watch this afterwards? Yes, this will be a full length video that you can watch anytime. Yeah, there's, there are some people that when they switch over to a plant-based system, for a while their sex drive goes up. It's because it's a, it could be a hydraulic issue. And many times um, when you're coming from something that's not healthy and then you eat something that's better, your sex drive will grow up. Also, on a vegan diet, if you're eating a ton of carbohydrates and you're eating a lot of calories, you're going to have a high sex drive um, because it, it – it's loading up your glycogen stores, which can be very anabolic and hormonal in, the, in certain circumstances. Yeah, man, Ryan, I feel you, dude. It was totally, totally horrible. I had like the most gorgeous, sexy girlfriend ever when I was vegan and eh, uh, you know, high five, high five, babe. See you, see you later, BWK. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, I'm going to be on here for five to 10 more minutes total. Um, so if you have questions, get them in. Um, I'm going to be closing things up here pretty soon. It's been great talking to you guys live. Uh, in the comment section, if you're watching this later, uh, which a, a bunch of you will be, let me know if you like this format, if this is helpful for your guys and you guys are deriving some benefit from it. I'd be happy to do this more often, maybe on a weekly basis, maybe on a monthly basis. I don't know. Leave some comments down below. Let me know um, if this type of content is something that you like. Also, here's something that is you guys might not know about me, but I don't make videos because um, I feel like making videos. 
and I don't just pick random topics. I get DMs and emails and obviously a ton of comments on my work. And I, I really want to make the videos that um, I really want to make the videos that are going to give you guys the best bang for your buck. They're like the whole point of this channel is not for me, it's for you. And so if you do have specific questions and, and here's, I want to preface this a little bit. What's the best diet for eczema? If you, if you ask that question, you're not going to get an answer because I say it every single video, but if you have a very specific detailed video or ideas about topics in general, share them with me. And I, I more than likely will use them um, and, and make videos about them because I'm, again, this is for you guys big time. Cool, Chris. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks, Ryan, for the feedback. Thanks, Cindy. Carlos Hernandez, will you do another q and I'm seeing uh, the tail end of your live. Yeah, I'm gonna, as I was just saying, if you guys like this format, let me know. I'll do more of them. Also, remember, if you miss this live, it's going to be on the YouTube channel. You can see it. Go back and see it anytime you want. It's not like a Snapchat where it's live and then 24 hours goes to some weird place in the internet. Fertile vision zwa. Can you talk more about ethnicity and diet customization? Can Italian eat pasta? Can Asians eat rice? Uh, it's not so much about Italians being able to eat pasta because pasta is considered Italian, but you have to look at the region and the traditional diet of your people as just something to think about. So uh, the Mediterranean diet really isn't based on pasta. It's based on fish. It's based on olives. It's based on tomatoes. It's based on locally grown produce. Um, and they eat a lot of lamb. Um, and they eat a wide variety of animal foods. Um, and so they have a nice varied diet. Um, but there are some individual differences. So for instance, um, as a... Nordic Scandinavian person, I'm not going to really have too many issues with raw cream and butter. Whereas um, someone who might be from Tanzania probably can't handle the, the dairy at all, not the cream, maybe the butter, but they might be better off using things like tallow and suet um, and duck fat and things of that nature. So and, but this isn't like a hard science. This is just something that I've been gathering information. And at some point I'll do a meta analysis and really check what the data, you know, detailed says, but I have noticed that for a lot of people, um, it, it can be a little bit of a factor. Love Yourself asks, uh, how long does it take to return to your natural skin tone after you heal? I'm guessing, and if I'm wrong, uh, please forgive me. It sounds, I get this question usually from darker skinned people. Um, for me personally, my skin tone's peachy, pink, red, white when it's healthy. Um, and so <laughs> from eczema dermatitis to peachy, red, white skin, it's not a big jump in color. But if you're African-American or if you're you know, Mexican or if you're just dark melatonin skin, melanin skin rich, then um, you can get hyperpigmentation. You can get discoloration. Generally, it takes about six months to a year um, to have some changes happen. Johnny B, are ground meats bad? No, ground meats are perfectly fine as long as they're quality meat. I eat ground beef a lot. Ryan Lyon, you need to get on a, an agent to be on the next Viking TV series. Ragnar Lofbrock, he's my hero. I love Ragnar. If I was gay, I'd date Ragnar. Thanks, Pradavas. All right, you guys. Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, again, you can watch this anytime you want. I uh, really appreciate your guys' questions. And um, since you guys are enjoying this, it seems, and I'll get more feedback as the days go on, I'll try to do this more regularly. But for all of you guys who've been hanging out the whole time and asking questions, thanks so much for your feedback. 
Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, and I wish all of you guys the best of luck, obviously. And again, if you have any ideas, topics that you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave a comment, shoot me a DM, whatever, get in contact with me. And um, for those of you guys who need extra help, uh, coaching three phases workbook, which will be obsolete pretty soon. The course is going to be running, um, as I mentioned, a bunch in this video. Um, everything as far as my offerings, including Scanessa, is in the description box. So give that a peep. Um, guys, I'll be back with many more videos really soon. Um, enjoy the rest of your, your Sunday uh, for most of you. Kevin Berry, do you know when the next stream will be? That's a setup question, brother. I'm probably going to do the next stream next Sunday again, probably 4:30 or 5:30 Central. Um, but again, I'm going to get some feedback from you guys, and then I'll lock that time in. But thanks, Kevin, for pushing me on that. Um, he's actually the one. Kevin Barry's actually the guy who um, has told me that I need to start doing this. Um, and so, thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Sundays are perfect. Awesome. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. Bye bye. End in the stream.